What is going on, everybody? Have you ever walked around all day with wet socks? Then you might want to play Slanesh Demons in Warhammer 40k. I'm going to talk to you about the Slanesh Warlord traits. Now, first, before we get into that, I want to cover the couple rules that the Slanesh Demons all have. One is quick silver swiftness, meaning all your units in your army, if battleforged, are going to get strike first in combat, which means if your opponent has strike first in combat, for example, they charged, then you alternate starting with the player whose turn it is. So if they have two units charge you, then one of your units is going to get a strike right after theirs without even spending command points. So that's pretty cool. We're stacking further on the hand-to-hand -hand combat buffs, which we all know uh, we don't really need as much as maybe some survivability. But on top of that, if your army is battle-forged, all your characters gain the loci or locus of swiftness. All Slanesh demons within six inches of a friendly model of the Locus of Swiftness, which is any friendly Slanesh character, you can declare a charge even if you advanced. So by taking only Slanesh in your detachment, and you can still ally in other things, but the Slanesh detachment has to be all Slanesh demons, and they can all run in charge within six of a hero. So basically your whole army runs in charges, which is awesome, and you're going to need it. We have mentioned a few of the Warlord traits previously in the characters because we have gone through all the hqs now go back and watch those videos or pull up whatever hq you are interested in learning about we're trying to create a library here for uh, slanesh players in warhammer 40k so my absolute favorite warlord trade i believe is number one celerity of slanesh add three to your warlord's movement characteristic you can get some models up to like 15, 17 inch move characteristics and first turn charges or just being in range with key auras is going to be really, really good for your army. So I think this one is a real winner. The next one, number two, quick silver duelist. You can reroll failed hit and wound rolls for attacks made by your warlord in the fight phase against characters. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, rerolling failed hit and wound is a pretty big deal, but it's only against characters, and we still need to make sure our warlord gets into combat. And then, at that point, you want to get into combat with the character. So, it, I mean, it could come up, but I don't... And it's definitely powerful if you have a way to get it to come up, but, you know, I don't know if I'd ever take that one. Number three, Murder Dance. If your warlord charges in the charge phase, add D3 attacks until the end of the charge phase. There are D3 attack characteristic until the end of the ensuing fight phase, roll at the end of the charge phase, uh, plus D3 attacks when you charge. Pretty cool, extra attacks, always good. I still think the movement is gonna be more likely to let you even charge and fight before uh, Shadow Sword blows you up or you know something like that. Uh, or those new Repulsor tanks firing at you is going to be pretty devastating for your five up in Vuln Keeper of Secrets. So it's a good one, I guess. Extra attack's always good, but you never... Remember, we're going to be focusing a lot on survivability and how to try to make this army work, not on theoretical, this is good because you can do this with it. It's going to be more about this probably won't ever be taken by me, uh, even though it looks like it might be okay on paper. The next one, Fatal Caress. Each time you make a wound roll of 6+, plus for your Warlord in the fight phase, the target suffers a mortal wound in addition to any other damage. This one is terrible. Absolutely terrible. You need to hit and then wound and make a wound roll of a 6 to do a mortal wound, and you just simply don't have that many attacks. If it was every time you wound in the fight phase, you do a mortal wound in addition, That'd be cool. Or maybe on a 4 plus you do a mortal wound. Or uh, on a 6 you do D6 mortal wounds or something. Something to really shoot for with some big you know, punching power. But once again, I would never take this one. You just simply don't have the volume of attacks. Even though you do have quite a few attacks. Uh, not enough to justify 
a potential one extra mortal wound on occasion. So the next one, Savage Hedonist. Add one to your Warlord's attack characteristic. Uh, this one seems just not good. I would rather take D3 on the charge because it's potentially better than this. And, uh, you know, one all the time, sure, when you get charged, but if somebody's charging you with something, they're probably counting on killing you before you fight. So I'm not too keen on this one either. And then this one here is the second favorite. Number six, Bewitching Aura. Bewitching Aura, enemy models subtract one from their attack characteristic to a minimum of one while they are within six of the Warlord. This does not affect enemy vehicles. So that mean, means uh, Primaris Marines are now on attack one. Pretty solid. Any model that instead of making an attack makes three attacks with this weapon, you're basically cutting out three attacks. Uh, an Orc Boy would go down to one attack. A Gene Stealer loses an attack. Quite a few units losing attacks. And this is an aura, which is good for your characters that are helping your units fight. And it's a six inch aura. And if you remember, the Keeper of Secrets had a 14 inch move. So that's a 20 inch aura before you make your run roll. And uh, potentially you could be in combat too, so that could help you. So I think it is a toss up between plus three to your Warlord's movement characteristic or the minus one attack characteristic aura. I think both of them are good. I think the extra movement protects you from the shooting phase. Uh, and clearly, minus one attack aura does not protect you from the shooting phase at all, but it does protect you from the fight phase, although we are good at the fight phase. We are Slanesh Demons. So hopefully you enjoyed this little review of the Slanesh Demon Warlord traits. If you like this video, please subscribe. We have a ton of Slanesh videos coming out in the month of July. Hopefully I see you in the comment section below.